praise the Lord. I'll share that with you in a minute. So Henry, Lisa, and I will do something together. And if you have any questions about spiritual warfare, I want you to kind of start to think your head and you can ask questions toward the end. And we'll do this differently. We're not going through emotion on Sunday. Everybody just worship. So one, two, three so songs and sit down. Nothing happened. <laughs> but I pray that when you walk out of this, this 2018 to 2019, you're not going to walk into a new season of our life. Amen? Well, that's how we are going to fight our battle. Turn the neighbor and say, this is how I'm going to fight my battle. battle. Alright, so I'll go through a couple of the signs that you might be in spiritual warfare. Are you with me on this one? Yes. Uh, are you okay? Yes. So, number one. Anything that brings pressure to bear against God's revealed will for your life. Oh. If God has done something revealing his will for your life maybe a job you got a job after praying so long that's the will of god that could be if something go against it could be spiritual warfare could be spiritual warfare if god reveal you to be serving in certain ministry field or just to talk to your neighbor and suddenly you something come again suddenly come against that that might be spiritual affair. Okay? And 1.2, patterns of recurring negative events that actually come after that, like very negative. The kid may get sick, stuff like that. Uh, you may get into some trouble. So anybody you kind of say, yeah, I'm going through that. Can I see your hands? Like, I'm kind of going through that. God wants to move into a new house, and then suddenly something going on around that. Is that right? Anybody like that? Somebody like really put you in a new job and boom, you know, next, next thing you know, it's like, whoa, some, someone come against me verbally, but hey, hey be, be careful. Now maybe the flesh and blood, we are not fighting against that person. So, so I, want to, I want to turn this to uh, uh, Lisa or Henry. Okay, Henry on the start. So on this one, do you have anything to add? Patterns, patterns of negative things can also be um, things that come up in your life or thought patterns. You might have um, you might have thoughts of being unworthy, or you might um, you might have things that came from prior, say, family, where people put you down, and there are lies that are in your mind and in your thoughts that keep coming up and keep thinking the same negative thoughts over and over again. Does anybody say anybody really like, like that? One? Negative okay. thoughts, like coming again and again. It may not be just you. It may be a spiritual warfare you are in because God has something best for you. Yes? Amen. Now Amen. What, yeah. what happens with that, if you have these negative thought patterns coming in over and over again, that's not from God. These are lies that come from the enemy because he wants to destroy you. And God, when he speaks to you, if he is speaking to you, it's always for what the King James calls edification or building up. He always encourages. He always builds you up. He never tears you down. God never speaks negative things to your mind. He always speaks encouragement. So when we first started Agape House, we actually had the heart to have an online ministry to reach out to people. So I was in my half basement, and I know that's the will of God for us to serve online, amen? We are still active online, uh, like we have some uh, video game addiction type of uh, seminar where 500 people are online, okay? So praise God for that, but that was eight years ago. There's no, there was only Skype, nothing else. So. We build our own platform, and the first night we want to broadcast our service and our ministry. You know what happened? The whole block on my side of the house went dark. <laughs> and what really made me very like, uh, cross the street, everybody got light and electricity. <laughs> so just this block is like, boom. You know, we start at 8, 00 p.m. 
the electricity went out at 7.55. No. Oh. You know what we did? We didn't even say, oh, Lord. <laughs> and all it's like, oh, we are under attack. No, we said, let's do telephone. <laughs> so everybody dial in with our computer. Amen? We are not going to let this down easily. Amen? Because if something, God gave you something, seem to be somebody taking that away or come against you. Don't give up because that, I know God is going to give you something special. Amen? Hallelujah. Uh, did we something? Oh, just real quick. Um, uh, your, your mic. Uh, oh, some, yeah. Some people I've shared this with, but um, uh, this past year is the most recent for me. Uh, God really spoke to me in many ways. Um, you know, for some reason I was getting a lot of dreams and he just was speaking to me in those dreams um, about my um, upcoming year on my job, that, um, that something new was about to be birthed. And little did I know that they were going to promote me. And so when I when I, they did promote me, I, I was like so surprised and then I remembered those dreams and the things God had spoken to me so I knew in my heart this was God he had made this thing happen well do you know I'm not going to go into all the details but I can't tell you how many things went wrong during that first six months on the job with staff members getting injured and being out for six weeks, another staff member getting fired on my team, another staff member, um, the husband's sick and she was out for six weeks, and then all of these things, after one, after another, after another, then I got sick and I was out for four weeks, and if you've ever taken care of children, you know this is the worst scenario because you, you, you need some consistency. You can't have people in and out and subs and all this stuff. It was a real challenge, and I was um, you know, the temptation would have been for me to um, just, and I did have to battle this temptation just to complain and woe is me and why is this happening to me. Excuse me, I got a little bit here. <coughs> Excuse me. So, <laughs> hey, can, we, can we leave our hand prayer for Lisa? She came here totally fine before we, you know, then. As soon as I start testifying. Yeah, so we pray that we are, we are. No, folks, you know, do not be afraid of spiritual warfare, all right? But it's very real. In the name of Jesus, the each need to go. Amen. Let our sister share smoothly in the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen. Yeah, so the temptation was just to complain or why is this happening to me? They didn't give me enough staff and nothing happened to anybody else. Why me? It's a target on my back, you know? I had Lyme disease, I had triple infection, I had one thing after another. But the Holy Spirit just kept reminding me, this is not about those people, it's not about your boss, it's not about you. It's about the enemy trying to um, hijack God's good plan for you and trip you up. So I just, you know, that was where I had to lift my eyes higher and say, God, you gave me this job and you are good. And you promised that you will give me everything I need to go through this. And so that's my testimony. What did you do when you feel all those things, events, you know, pattern of recurring negative events, people coming, things happen unexpected, bring pressure to bear against God's perfect will for you as a promotion and job. What did you do after that? Uh, how did I fight yeah, it? How did I fight? I, I had to keep um, going back to the fact that God, if you put me here, then I know you're going to take care of all these details. You're in control of this whole situation, even though it looks like the waves are going like this. I'm going to look at you. I'm going to trust you that you are in control. And that was not easy. It was a battle for me to choose to do, to make that um, statement of faith. But um, So you say, God, you are in control. You are in control. You go back to him and say, God, you put me here. You are in control. Right. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yes, that's how we fight back. Amen? Wow. That's very good. Um, so, as the pastor, I want to share with you one thing. This is season God has opened door for this church to step into a mountain called family. Turn your neighbor and say family. 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 For you who are not married yet, it's a season you also be part of it because you are going to have a great family. Amen? Amen. So that's where enemy of God 
coming and say, well, this church is going to be good. They're going to step into the mountain called family. You know where he's going to attack. What do you think? Yes. What do you think? Yes. Let me try it again. We are stepping into a season that family around us will be blessed. Our family will grow stronger, yes? yes. Things are never turn around, we'll turn around. And the enemy of God would look at from far and say, Whoa, <laughs> what, what are they going to do? <laughs> Attack our family. So, so if you are going through some of the signs, spiritual warfare, I don't want to go through like, oh, 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 what? No, I want you to feel so blessed. Say, I am going to do great in God's kingdom. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Because you are on the crossfire. So you are on the cross of the That means you are on the right track with God. Amen? Amen. If you lost a job, if you are worried about your job, this might be a spiritual warfare. I want to discern this today. And we want to help each other how we fight back. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Because I've seen so many Christians don't know how to fight back. Every time they stop praying, Worship is like very soft, minor songs. Like, <laughs> we have no time for that in spiritual warfare, amen? We need to know what the Bible teaches how we fight that. Hallelujah? Hallelujah. Alright, number two sign. Okay. Changes for the worse. Especially sudden or severe. Remember those two words, sudden and severe. The areas of health, finance, and relationship. Very important notes. Um, it doesn't mean everything goes south. It's like, oh, spiritual warfare. I've seen people like waking up and then have a head that, oh, spiritual warfare. No, no, no. Just because you drink too much last night, okay? <laughs> Somebody wake up and say, bird, you know, spiritual warfare. No, no, you ate pizza with onion, okay? <laughs> So there's something physical, there's something you did, oh, watch out. So, so, but, 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 sometimes, sometimes, it may be some other people's wrongdoing and all that. Very important, I want to mention this because, yes, when things happen suddenly, it may not be spiritual warfare, but spiritual warfare oftentimes happen very suddenly. With me on this one? Let me try it again. The spiritual warfare oftentimes comes in so suddenly you are not prepared. With me on this one. Amen. That means our enemies are as good as you think. They don't have long-term strategy. Amen? Amen? They just have the short-term burst on you. If you can resist it, he's going to flee. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Are you with me on this one? We are not dealing with a very like long-term strategist. You know, actually we are. But I'll talk about it in a minute. But he always throw you the short term stuff, like boom, 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 right after that. Okay. Anybody identify with this one right now? Anybody going through this? Like sudden change of things, like health, finance, relationship, anybody? Ruth? Nobody, nobody else? All right. So, um, Harry, have something to add on this one? Not, not on this one. Okay. Lisa? Well, what came to my mind was... Um, uh, bye. Yeah. What came to my mind was when um, we were uh, really um, starting to step out in new places in ministry, Henry and I, um, and we were really starting to pray together more, we were really starting to um, be um, involved a lot more here at Gopi House, and, and God was really uniting us together and, and, and doing something really good between us spiritually. Um, and we were moving forward into something new in the Lord. And I don't know if that makes sense to you, but anyway, all of a sudden, we got um, the news that Henry had the prostate cancer. Boom, out of the blue. He'd never been sick in, in, ever since I knew him. When, he was never yeah, sick. When, when I, the last time I had been in the hospital for an overnight before I had my prostate cancer, 60 years old, I was, it was when I was born. <laughs> 16 years without a hospital visit than just like that process. So I, I knew immediately that this was an attack of the enemy, you know, to try to distract us and to discourage us from the track that we were moving on. And what did you do when that happened? I know it's not easy. How did you face it? Well, I, I tend to be logical and analytical. Like All right. I, on logical. Analytical. It's okay. 
you know, I got on the internet <laughs> and I looked it up and came to the conclusion that um, God was blessing me by having it caught early. Amen. But even then, there's still a little time frame in there where you're thinking, this is the end. You know, and you have to face what if the cancer has spread, what if, what if, what if. And so, you know, I had to just release that to God. How did you release? Um, Taking a camera out? <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he did that, but I think something more than that. Well, I, you know, I just, I had to get alone with God and pray. Uh -huh. And um, I had to come to a point of saying, if this is the end, uh, you know, if, you know, if this is not curable, whatever, if it has spread, then uh, I just ask him to give me the grace to be able to die well, you know, to be able to glorify God in the end. But, and I responded a little differently. As soon as I heard right, the no, news... Because you're the wife's <laughs> side, okay? Go ahead. Yeah. I, I've, you know, immediately the fear started coming on me. And I knew, wait a minute, this is not from the Lord. I am not getting into this fear. And immediately I put on my favorite praise song and started to sing and dance and declare that he, this is not the end and that God was going to um, see him through him and he healed it. Because I knew that was God's will. Can, can, you, can, you, can you demonstrate how did you do it? What? <laughs> <laughs> no, we want to just see. <laughs> no, yeah. Oh, okay. Later. Later, yeah. Now I'm just the show and tell part. Alright, so you declared God's health on him. Yeah, I declared what yeah. I know God said in his word, even though I was faced with exactly the opposite in front of me. Amen. Oh, okay, um, number three. Temptation to sin beyond the normal. Uh, yeah, we all get tempted as human beings. Everybody get temptation. Uh, and temptation originate with our own weakness and our ungodly desires from James 1, 13 to 15. But the enemy can use situation and people around us to apply extreme or sudden pressure on us in these areas. So that you get tempted, just extreme, like just boom, come in, beyond normal, right? Beyond normal temptation. Anybody go through this right now? All right, so that come in a lot of times Men and women fall because of that just little thing. Um, that's why we need a small group of people around us. So we could see that um, uh, in Revelation 12, 11, that they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of what? Their testimony. And they love not their lives unto the death. So um, the temptations, especially our younger ones, our youth, our college students, they are the sudden coming of temptations, okay? It could happen in a party. You suddenly surround by people say, hey, would you try this? Or you suddenly got a temptation of something sexual related, or just tempted by joining some strange stuff. And if it comes so sudden, watch out. It may not just be that person, or that party, or that group, but there is a spiritual warfare compartment there that's trying to get your life. You see that? So if anything comes kind of temptation-wise, like beyond normal, beyond normal, okay? Sexually, physically, financially, just tempt you to do something. Addiction. Addiction. Actually, addiction usually comes from small things. You know, you smoke a cigarette. The Bible didn't say you cannot smoke a cigarette. No. You're able to do what you feel good. But the cigarette usually lead to, not me, studies say that, lead to next things and next thing. And before you know it, it's a heavy drop. You see what I'm talking about? So those little like hunch of temptation right away, suddenly, that urge to do it right now, a lot of time come from the devil. Are you with me on this one? Yes. Let me try that again. The sudden temptation to do something, get it down, get it over with. Some men just spend 50 minutes in a motel and ruin their life. You know what I'm talking about? 50 minutes of their life with a woman they shouldn't be 
and end up ruining all of your life. You see that? I'm not saying I cannot be a 10, but you, usually those temptations come in sudden, yeah? So, so young people now, adults, men in the house, when you travel, when you go on Florian trip, those are the moments that be, be, be watching now. The temptation comes down and could be spiritual warfare, all right? But how we all overcome, overcome this? By the blood of the lamb. Yeah. Yeah. So when I walk into a hotel room, this is our family practice. We pray, precious blood of Jesus, what? Cover that room when you walk in. You don't know what people did before. So you say, Lord, your precious blood covers this room. Amen? Yeah. If you travel a lot, do that. And then be accountable. Somebody always can get into a life and say, how are you doing, sir? How are you doing, brother? And we are, all be, we are able to be enough. Don't withdraw from rules. Okay, that's very important, all right? So um, this is how we overcome, it's how we fight our battle. Now, the next few has to do with psychological instability, all right? The society, especially Asian society, put a lot on this kind of condition. I would feel ashamed. We feel like we don't talk about it. But you know, more than 35% of Americans are in cert are at certain level of depression. You know that? 35%, you know how high is it? Every three person here, one out of three, we have some level of depression, all right? so. So we sometimes put this person out there like, oh, think that person with that condition is not normal. We have that issues and we don't feel talk about it. So that's what we deal with that right now. The number four signs, atmosphere of pressure or oppression. And young people say, oh, that's my high school. Well, your high school might be in spiritual warfare, you don't even know. <laughs> No, there are places that are constantly in the, the spiritual warfare, all right? But not many. In Rome 14, 17, the Apostle Paul tells us that the kingdom of God consists of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Those are the three things that you know. If you lose peace, if you lose righteousness, if you lose joy, then you lose the spirit. So, but on the other end of the spectrum, some of our sisters and brothers, like everywhere they go is spiritual warfare. Oh, I walk in here, there's a demon there. I walk in there, there's something. No, no, no. If you do that, you also lose your what? Righteousness, peace, and what? So that's not the way to do it, okay? So that's the other end of the spectrum. The other end of the spectrum is like, oh, there's nothing, you know, I, I deal with this, you know, this. No, we have to know the atmosphere, the atmosphere, the atmosphere. You may walk into the place, to make like we are we were on a mission field walking to a temple young people when you guys been to the Baiji Si the hundred chicken temple how do you feel that atmosphere around the temple Justin you remember you don't remember <laughs> yeah the hundred chicken temple on the hill where they worship for many years of you know Buddha and all that how do you feel when you walk around Some, something, some oppress, oppressing, right? Karina, how do you feel? Heavy. heavy. There's a heaviness there. It's very real. Uh, ben, how do you feel? Hundred chicken is supposed to be good, right? By Jesus. Hundred chicken temple. But how do you feel? That's okay. If you don't remember, don't remember. Okay, you help now. Uh, so, but that temple was used to worship idol for hundreds of years. And after the mission team prayed for many years, there used to be tall trees, dark. Now the tree gone and the, the sunshine coming into that temple. Amen? After years of praying, walk around it. So atmosphere. Anybody goes through that right now? Like you are in certain atmosphere, you feel constant, constantly being attacked. Anybody? Yes? Okay, we have, to, we have to deal with it, okay? You just like walk around like, uh, not, not right, okay? It's not like, so don't watch too many of this uh, kind of movie. What do you call this movie? Horror movie, okay? 
Spiritual warfare is not horror movie, all right? Devil don't look like that. <laughs> all right, so it, it's, 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 it's their trick to get your mind. The atmosphere, you know, you know, you know, like something not right. Anybody been with that kind of situation? I had, um, I had yeah. an experience when my son was very small. Um, we, would, we went into a video store, and I felt it right away. I'm like, oh, just this, there is something in the atmosphere in this video store. They were playing all kinds of horrible, you know, trailers on the things up in the sky there, and, um, but every video store has that, but for some reason when I walked into this video store, I just felt this kind of dark feeling, and a little scared. And interestingly, I didn't say anything, and my son, who was probably early elementary school or preschool, said, Mom, I don't like this place, it's weird. There's a bad feeling here. How old was he? He was, you know, young, preschool, preschool, yeah. So we left. And he, he was always very sensitive to those kind of things, too. So, um, yeah, that's when you pick up on that, then you kind of like say, well, okay, I think I'll just leave now. <laughs> so. Very good. So, but I don't want to go the other end of the spectrum, like, oh, everywhere you are looking for, like, oh, you know, there. No, we don't do that, because then you lose your what? Peace, joy, righteousness. You go in, you know, you have Holy Spirit. Tell them the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. It's greater than anything in the world. Amen? Yeah. yeah, I was with a group of my friends when I was in high school. They play something called the Asian. I don't know what English is. It's like you put some hand, you, your hands on a disc. How do you call it? A disc? Ouija we, we board. Ouija board? So they play Ouija board when we were out in the hotel. They put out a disc, Ouija board. And they want to ask a Ouija board question. They put down a couple of things. And the Ouija board didn't want to do anything. And then my friend said, it was very, it was working. It was one of the best. You know, the first thing he turned around is asking, are there any Christians in the room? Because they know if there are Christians in the room, it won't go. You know why? Because what's inside us is what? Greater than... So they, so they say, well, only can you get out to do something? <laughs> Go to play Ouija board. I say, thank you. So I knock out. So it start to move. I don't care how you move. But folks, um, atmosphere, yes? We bring an atmosphere of God's presence wherever we go. Amen? Alright, so I don't want to go wrong. Because if you lose peace, lose joy, lose righteousness, that's not the spiritual warfare how we fight it. Amen? That we fight it, we fight with God's presence of righteousness, joy, and peace. That's what we bring. If you come to our house, anybody, do you feel a sense of peace in my house? Yes. yes. Thank you, Ruth. <laughs> <laughs> That's because of the, the food. <laughs> you need your house to have a sense of peace, amen? Yes. That's how you fight the spiritual warfare, all right? I will teach you how to do that. You have, you have, how should you have a sense of what? Joy. All right. When you guys come on to my house on Thursday, do you feel a sense of joy in my house? Yes. Joy of playing video game. Joy. <laughs> Some of your house are walking, I know you have joy. Some of you are walking, I'm sorry. You have to work on it. Amen? Is that okay? Can I be honest today? Yes. Because your houses don't have that. To fight that spiritual warfare. Dong Yo, let me show you your house. I feel it. I feel it. Of course, Dong Yo's uh, barbecue rib. <laughs> <laughs> but, but your house, when you open, when you start to put worship music, I, I will teach that. When you start to get into it, how we fight the battle, your room can turn into a spiritual weapon. Amen? Amen. You can turn it into a spiritual weapon for the Lord, amen? amen. And, and, Nan, you are moving to the new house soon? Yes. Not yet. We pray for her a new house, amen? She, want, you know, she has a heart to get people in her house to start a small group. So, uh, for a year, they put their house on the market. Try to put it on the market. And, Guinan, when you put it on the market, how soon you sold it? Not even a week. So, amen? Amen. Yeah, YK. <laughs> yeah, YK also? 
No, uh, we started a bit longer than that. <laughs> but higher than our expectation, so it's... Uh, yeah. When you are moving to the place, when you are selling your property, all those moments are spiritual warfare moments. You have to pray. Amen? Don't just rush into decision. With me on this one? Amen. Don't rush into decision. Let that be God's decision. Don't go for money. Don't go for the best bidder. Pray until God releases you. You know that's when the spiritual mo moment happens. So, yeah. Go ahead. Oh, we'll, we'll jump into the songs. One more. You want to share something? No. Okay. One more. We're going to do something, okay? Uh, severe discouragement. Anybody go through this right now? In Romans 14, 17. The Apostle Paul tells us that the kingdom of God consists of righteousness, peace, and joy to all this. Okay, the same thing. When we run those things. So severe discouragement. Anybody go through that? Sure. Like you feel like total discouragement to like, I'm useless. It becomes attacking who you are. Anybody go through that right now? Yes. Or be attacked all your life? Oh wow, really? Yeah. You're always going through. So, uh, I'll turn this to Harry. Harry has a song. Uh, now go ahead. All right, everybody stand up. <laughs> When I was younger and I was uh, single for a long time and wanted to be married, I went through a lot of discouragement. And uh, there, was a, there was a brother who came from the north of England with a nice Scottish accent and he taught us this song. And this song um, will lift up your soul and your spirit. Turn me up a little bit here. Testing, testing, testing. Hmm. Okay, there we go. So what I want to do, um, when you are in a place of discouragement and the enemy is speaking lies to you, then the counteracting, the way to fight that is with the truth. So what I like to do is when we sing this song, we'll sing it through a couple times. It's pretty easy. You'll get to know the words. And then I want you to find someone uh, and look each other in the eye and sing this prophetically to each other. And the, the truth of this song that you won't leave this place as you came in, in Jesus' name, will set people free okay so i'm going to teach you this song and then we will just keep singing this we keep singing and we keep singing and we keep singing because our job as believers is to believe and the more that you repeat this the more likely you are to begin to believe it it starts to sink into your spirit and you will find that this truth will begin to actually set you free from what you're going through You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demented, sick, or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demented, sick, or lame For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name Bound, oppressed, demented, sick, or lame For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same you won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. All right, do you think you've got it now? Easy enough, so pick a partner and, and look into each other's eyes. And I want you to sing this to each other as a prophetic declaration, all right? Everybody got a partner now? 
you won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demented, sick or lame, for the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demented, sick or lame, for the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demented, sick or lame, for the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demented, sick or lame, for the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. All right, now, if there's still somebody who is struggling and doesn't believe this yet, I want you to come up front and Lisa or Kung Lee or Xiao Wei are going to sing it to you. <laughs> and there is power. There is power in this song. So come on up. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demented, sick or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demanded, sick or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demanded, sick or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. Bound, oppressed, demented, sick or lame. For the Holy Ghost of Acts is still the same. You won't leave here as you came in Jesus' name. All right. Now, does every... Do you believe it? Do you believe that you're going to leave changed, that you are you are changed? <laughs> How many believe it? How many believe? How many have been touched and believe that God is doing something and that you are being changed? Amen. All right. Bible. We praise the Lord. Yeah, right, right. Now, do you have to sing to praise the Lord? No. Because the Bible talks about so many ways that we can praise the Lord. Now, when we do it together singing, it's powerful, it's wonderful, it's glorious, especially if you love to sing. But there's other ways. You know what the scripture says the other ways are? Dancing. Dancing. Playing instruments. Playing instruments. Um, shouting. Shouting. What else? Clapping hands. Clapping hands. Or you can just speak out the praises of God, right? Like right now, I'm going to do that. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make its boast in the Lord. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. So when I read that, I'm praising him and my spirit is lifted up. You know, and if I'm in a tough place, I can read that over and over and over again. And I'm praising God, and that becomes a weapon against my enemy. 
that he's trying to bring you down. So there's a word in there that's important. It says, magnify the Lord with me. What is magnify? Make him big. Okay, make him big. Magnify like a magnifying glass. When you put it on something, it enlarges it, makes it really big. Well, when we magnify the Lord, we are making him bigger than our problems. We're making him bigger than the enemy. We're making him bigger than the circumstances, right? And so that's why praise is a weapon, because what we're doing is we're shifting over from looking at our problems and making them big and just looking at God and saying, no, God is bigger. And how many of you believe the Bible's true? If, you, if you're a Christian, I'm assuming, you know, you have embraced God's word as truth. All right? So anything that you read from this Bible, you can confidently say, this is true. All right? Is there anything that's too hard for God? No. Is there any situation that's bigger than God? No. no. Is there any problem that's bigger than God? No. All right, so the more that you say that in the face of circumstances that look big, the more you're declaring it right in the face of the enemy. All right, so when Henry had cancer, that looked pretty big. So I said, you know, is this problem too big for God? Is cancer too big for God? No. Is God, does God want to heal? What does the word say? Yes. God wants to heal. Is God able to heal? Absolutely. God is able to heal. So in the face of my fear, I would praise the Lord by saying those things that I knew were true from his word. I can have confidence in saying them. I'm not making it up. I'm not doing positive thinking. I'm not trying to psych myself out. Those words are truth. And because they're truth, they're power. So that's why praise is our weapon Amen. against whatever the enemy brings at us. Very good. Um, thank you, Lisa. And to continue on signs of spiritual warfare, number six, creeping condemnation and confusion. The conviction of the Holy Spirit is specific and bring conclusion through repentance. You know, condemnation and repentance are two opposite things. Condemnation that nail you down, push push you down, nail you to like the coffin that you couldn't come out. But repentance bring what? Freedom. Repentance bring the liberty from God. And and the Holy Spirit is always specific about things and bring conclusion. Amen. Do you see the difference? Yes. When the true repentance comes, it brings conclusion to that season of our life. We have ended there. We have to repent and leave that situation. But condemnation put you there forever. With me on this one? I just nail you in the coffin. You stay there forever. And that's spiritual warfare number one. That's I feel a lot of people. Anybody go through that? That crippling condemnation. And confusion. The enemy thrive in confusion. The enemy is not that good, to be honest. We think it is us. Everything gets hazy. Confusion is often an attack on our minds. But it also be apparent in relationship where communication becomes distorted, perverted, and misrepresented. Have you ever found your communication channel being attacked by the enemy? Yeah. Wave your hand back at me, right? This is what I said, but she didn't hear that. Anybody with me on that? Yes. You want to give me an example? No, don't go there. <laughs> And confusion sometimes coming as part of that. How we deal with it. Number seven, intimidation and fear. Basically, I can. This is especially so when the fear is pressuring you to stop moving in the direction of God's reveal well for your life or that of your family, ministry, or church. Folks, um, I feel as a church we are moving to the family mountain and I just feel we are being attacked right now. As your pastor, I just feel that almost every level of this church, we are feeling the pressure. We are feeling something called fear, intimidation, even just from 
somewhere out of nowhere. You know, for example, Clinton, oh, I won't mention a place where we used to gather. Now we come to rent our place. I don't think we are qualified. They just raise up their standard. If you have a minor in there, just putting like, you can't teach minor about anything against homosexuality. You can do that. So if we don't agree with it, we can't rent our place anymore. Not here. You see, there is intimidation and fear coming. You see that? But God was so good. He prepared his place for us. Amen? Amen. Is that right? Otherwise, we'll get a sudden note to say, hey, if you don't sign this contract, we can't rent it to you anymore. The contract says you can't preach anything against homosexuality. Boom. Sign your name. I cannot do that. I'm not preaching against it. I'm preaching God's word. Amen? Amen. So, you see God's wisdom and we already here. Amen? Amen. God is greater. Amen? Amen? If this church worship, if this church prays, this is something, although they come, but they cannot touch us. Amen? Amen. They can. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you turn to your neighbor and say, they can't touch me. Come on. Can't touch me. Turn to the, the other side. They can't touch me. They can't touch me. No, seriously, very important. This is this is the world that I'm giving to college people when you go to campus. I was in Berkeley campus. When you have a this is a this is actually an experiment. A YouTuber wear like Muslim uh, outfit, sit there. Everybody high five him and just hey, you know how are you? If you wear like Christian, put a cross, everybody just give you that look. You see that? Why is that? Why is that? Why? You tell me why. The enemy doesn't want you to be a Christian. So. Well, you have to think about it. Why? Why? We open arm to Muslim people to a point like anybody wearing Muslim stuff. Oh, hi, five. How are you? If you put the Christian sign, everybody like give you that look and just why is that? You can tell it's Berkeley. Well, I understand liberty, very liberal campus, but 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 there's something going on. Intimidation and fear. Turn your to never say they can't touch me. Come on. Yeah. So it's a spiritual battle. All right. So we have to pray. We don't fight people. We don't go. Hey, why do you do that? Well, we don't do that. What we do. We praise God. We fight with truth. Amen? We fight with God. Okay, final one. <coughs> Battle in the mind. Negative tap, tapes playing. Our mind and that of others becomes a central battleground. 2 Corinthians 10, 5. Where the enemy tried to show a soul message that are contrary to the word that God has spoken to us or revealed in the Bible. Underscoring feelings such as failure. Fear, condemnation, hurl, even attack, and accusation out. I've seen so many people coming, guys. When you got a message from Agape House on Sunday, and when you walk out the door, I see like that word of God is being stolen right out of the door. Are you pissed out this way? That word's for you. You feel angry. You feel not happy with it. You know, but that word was given to you. Amen? Have you seen battle situations? That you know, battle is in our mind. Do you have that tape keep playing like, oh, you are going to be, you are going to fail, you cannot make anybody? Have that going on? Yeah? Yeah? Sometimes? Lisa? Yeah. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, going back to what you were saying, like right before that, like so many times I, I've been in a situation where I'm coming to church and I'm kind of off coming in, something happened before I came to church, which I think sometimes the enemy does that too, just to throw you off so that you're in a bad mood. And you get to church and everything looks bad, right? I have, I've experienced this. You know, why is the preacher dressing like that? He needs to look more, you know, professional, you know? <laughs> or why, you know, why they turn the music so loud? You know, we should have oh, to put earplugs loud. in. Okay. You know, like I find myself this, this thing, negative like things that if I'm just going with my rational mind it all makes sense right you shouldn't play music too loud you know I could come up with a whole rationale as to why that's a bad thing um, 
But what has happened there is that the enemy has got to me looking at the flesh and blood and the, and the situations around me and being critical of the people around me and I completely miss what the message of the day is trying to get to my spirit because the enemy had effectively blocked it with those kind of thoughts. So that's my... So Lisa, opinion. would you say that when we have those things going, negative thoughts, we are very close to the victory God's giving us. Um, I, I would say if you recognize it for what it is, then you realize, ah, yeah, that's when you're close to the victory because that's when you can say, I know where that's coming from and I'm not going to agree with it. Amen, amen, all right? So some of you are very close to what God wants to give to you and your family, amen? And that's why you're going through battle. So let's read this together as a church and we'll do something fun. Luke 10, 19, 20. I have, Jesus said, I have given you authority to trample on snakes and scorpions and to overcome all the power of the enemy. Nothing will harm you. However, do not rejoice that the Spirit is something to you. I rejoice that your names are written in heaven. Turn to your neighbor and say, Nothing will harm you. Come on. One more time. What, nothing will harm you. For the college people, you are going back to campus. Tell, tell, say to the college power around you, say, nothing is going to harm you on campus. Come on. Amen. Nothing. No job. Nothing. And if you are on high school campus, turn around and say, nothing will harm you. Nothing will harm you. We have so many gun violent stuff going on. You know that's part of spiritual warfare too, yes? Alright, so if you are in the workplace, can you turn and say, nothing will harm you. No one, no boss will harm you. Amen? Hallelujah. Alright. Um, so, Henry, do you have any prophetic word for, for people here? Do you have any prophetic word right now? I'm going to say, I'm going to say in a minute, what you think? Any prophetic word? I feel somebody you feel like you are being harmed by something you've been taken for a couple years. God's word for you. Do not worry about that. That's something you take. No matter what that is, He's not going to harm you. I want you to put that worry down. God's going to neutralize whatever that drug, whatever that you take, will neutralize that in the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Anybody, anything else? Not specific, but one thing that um, we also want to realize is that when we come to church, there are people around us to help lift us up because we only grow together, we only get into the place of the Spirit as we go together as a, as a church, as a body. It's not, church is not about individuals, it's about the kingdom of God. So we lift up those who are broken, those who are hurting, and we bring everybody to a place where we can enter into the presence of God together. And so we may take time, you know, from time to time, if somebody is particularly hurting, to raise them up to a point, you know, where they can enter in with them. And maybe in the future we, we will look into doing this before we um, go into worship of the Word, possibly because really it's all about the body of Christ. And we have to be together and free in order to really get to where we're going. So we'll have to see how things go, but it's good to have the ministry um, to people who are in need maybe before we start into worship because, or maybe right after worship because worship is the place where we gain the victory as, you know, as we were demonstrating with the song that I sang the truth of God's word begins to set you free and give you victory so once we are set free with victory then the word of God can go in much more effectively Everything in the body of Christ happens in the effect of this. Amen. And I want to declare over you, this congregation, 
that as this is the year of the open doors, 2018, yes. Yes. this is the year of new beginnings. This Amen. is the year yes. of new opportunities. Yes. Yes. This Amen. is the year of breakthrough. This yes. is the Amen. year of the prodigals returning. Yes. This is the this year is of Amen. amazing things happening. This is the season for it. Of course, the enemy doesn't like that, so he will try to come against you. But he is already defeated before he started. Amen. God has already won this battle for you. God fights your battles for you. All we have to do is stand still and Amen. praise him. That's all he asks us. And we will see it come to pass. Everything that he has spoken over your life, everything that he has promised, everything that he has destined for you during the season will come to pass. And just that's that's our joy Amen. and um, I think um, the boil it all boils down to like the answer to everything is praise Amen. praise is our weapon and if you want scriptural backup for that you can look at the, the battle of Jericho Who, does everybody know the battle of Jericho yes. All right, what did Joshua do? Yeah, did he yeah, did he have to go and fight in his own strength with his own armies? What did he have to do? What did God tell him? All you have to do is Yeah, obey. Okay, do something that I tell you to do even though it doesn't make sense. Obey. Walk around. And then at the end of that, what? Shout, raise a shout of praise. And they all lifted up a shout of praise together and the walls came down. And the enemies were defeated. That's one example. And then in the New Testament, we heard the story of Paul and Silas. Does anyone remember that one? Mm -hmm. And they were in jail. Yeah. Remember what happened? Singing yeah. hymns and praising God. Yeah, and, and Pastor preached on this. They weren't sitting there whining and complaining about all those bad <laughs> people. They lied against us. This is so unjust. The, the guards are so cruel. This is a horrible place. What kind of country is this? You know? They were, <laughs> they instead, they magnified the Lord over that situation. They exalted his name. They praised. And when they praised, the joy of the Lord lifted them up out of the horribleness of the circumstance to a new place, to a higher place, to a victory place. How many of you would like to be in that place, even in the midst of difficult circumstances? Yeah, you know? So, no? Nobody? Oh, oh a couple hands. <laughs> I mean, look, it, 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 it does boil down to do we want it, you know, or do we want to stay down in the mud, you know? A lot of times the mud is familiar and we want to, it's too hard to get out. You know, the mud being our negative thoughts, our bad feelings, our complaints. Hey, I'm honest, I like the mud sometimes. You know, it's, it's easier, it's familiar, I've been there most of my life. <laughs> you know, just thinking those negative thoughts all the time. Complaining, it's, it's familiar, but it, and it takes a little effort to get out, but not much. Really, we just lift our focus and begin to praise him, and the power of God takes over from there. He fights our battles. So I encourage you, he, want, he has um, a higher place for you, a joyful place for you, even in the midst of your hard times. That's his promise. Praise is our weapon to fight back. So we put out a playlist on YouTube called Praise, Power for Your Family. We'll share a line group. You can scan the barcode if you want. I don't know if it's good enough, but there are the songs we, we select and you can suggest to us as well. Because some of us, I feel like when you start to get close to God or start to fight a spiritual warfare, a lot of people are just like, you know, no, that's not how we start. We start with what? We start with praise. Pray. pray. Turn to never. We start with praise. Some young people, you turn on your your phone with worship songs. I love those worship songs. But 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 when we are in the spiritual warfare, worship songs don't help. The praise songs does. Amen. Because that's a, that's a principle from the Bible. Praise magnify the Lord. Amen. Praise. Get the Lord build His throne among us. Amen? Amen. Praise get He set His authority yeah. among us. Amen? Amen? And praise actually, we need to use our free will to choose to praise even though we don't want to. Amen? Amen. You walk in here too hard, too loud, too not, too this, too that. But we have to 
say to ourselves, come away, let's praise the Lord. Amen? You know why? Because devil starts with free will to say, I want to. I want to be like God. I want to do this. I want this. I want that. If you don't come into praise to use your free will to fight back, you will never fight back to that person, the enemy, who used his free will to go against God. With me on this one? So praise is to exercise your will to do. Yeah. I think it would be a good idea for you to um, share the difference between praise and worship. Yeah. And especially, um, you know, if there are subtle differences in the Chinese, let, let the, the Chinese speakers understand as well. Yeah, praise songs are those high beat, are those singing about God's greatness. Those songs will magnify God, okay? It's like the wine. When the song comes in, it fills you with what? Joy. Joy. It's bubble up. It's bring you up. It's not bring you down. But once you get lifted up by that joy, then worship song, are those songs softer and all that, bring you down like oil, sinking under the ground. You lay on the ground. A lot of people, when they come in, still in a spiritual warfare, the first thing coming is like, That's not going to cut it. You come in and see the like, no, I'm not going to cut it. When you come in, you're on the spiritual warfare, the first thing you do is what? Use your free will. Go up and say, I'm going to praise you no matter what. Amen? Ruth, thank you for being a model for us. When Ruth went through tough thing, the first thing she said, she what in the, in the hospital, Hi, Pastor, praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, I think some of them are fighting against depression right now. Some of them are fighting against oppression. Some of them are fighting against a strong will inside you. Can we fight back? This is how we fight the battle. Amen. Let's sing this song. Yeah, and, and just to say, uh, when when an army is fighting a battle, and you picture them with their swords thrust in, right? Do they just thrust their swords one time, and then battle's over? Probably never works out that way. All right, so it takes perseverance and persistence and many thrusts, right, to to um, gain victory in the battle. So that is why you will hear us singing songs over and over because those are thrusts. And sometimes the first time we sing that, it doesn't really sink in. Sometimes the second or third time we're getting there, and I've been in churches where we're getting there, and then we stop. Yeah. Right. But yeah, we keep pushing through until we get there, until we have gotten to that place of joy and victory. Yeah, so that's why. All right, so we're going to fight our battle, all right? Let's all stand up. If you have those signs, you feel discerned by the Holy Spirit, you are going through spiritual battle, um, this is how we fight our battles.